Hey guys, Shiny Zekrom here, and I have a little bit of something to uh, mention. The time that you are going to see the clip that is going on right now is actually a little bit more different than you might think. I've decided that instead of HT, I'm going to be doing the second part of this video, and we are actually going to go to a dungeon called Tanran Tunnel. However, I'm going to try and not only okay sorry I almost forgot what I'm doing but there is a reason why I'm recording right now and I will show you that in a couple of seconds once we complete this mission if we can find where our mission is I'll take a shortcut across here I guess Oh. Alright, so we're almost here. Just going to get rid of this mech here so we don't die. And if we complete this mission and escape on out, congratulations, your team is now Diamond Rank. At Diamond Rank, you are going to have 30 storage pages, which means you can store up to 300 items. So yeah, I wanted to get Diamond Rank today. I was just feeling a little bit motivated to do some missions. And... Thankfully to some nice people who gave me missions, I was able to hit Diamond Rank. So, besides Diamond Rank, there is one more rank I do want to hit in this video, if possible. We are going to hit it before we do this dungeon called Tanran Tunnel. So, I will meet you guys back when we hit this next rank. So, see you guys then. Hey guys, it's Shiny Zekrom, and welcome back to another video. In this part, we are going to do a dungeon called Tanran Tunnel. You think it's going to be right there? No. Hey, good news! <clears throat> Have you heard? The workers have finally managed to build a tunnel to Tanran region. Ah, you ask where the dungeon or the tunnel's entrance is? So much farther road east of from here, and you should find it. Be aware, I heard that tunnel is somewhat dangerous. Inhabited by plenty of tough Pokemon. Tanran's Pokemon are not as we could just expose as one, so be careful. Well, I'm off now. Farewell. See up that slow po or slow bro will talk to you the first time you come through here. Now we have to go this long way around. And you think, oh you can come down here and cut, right? Nope. You actually have to complete Tanran Tunnel in order to be able to use that little cut tree right there. So, what this means is we have to run our way around here <clears throat> and get all the way around to it. So, that's what we're just going to do right now. Could have skipped that, but whatever. Oh, right this way. Yeah, it's a long path around, so don't worry if you feel like, oh my goodness, it's going to take long. You'll only have to do this once, once you beat Tanran Tunnel, you see that little cut tree. I'll go and show that off, just to make sure. However, do make sure you keep cut, because you are going to need it for that tree right there. And then after that, yep, we are right at the entrance. So, let us head on in and get to a new region. So, <clears throat> starting off, there are no recruits in this dun- Oh, wait, sorry, there are. There's going to be, like, Diglets, Zubats, and Coughings to, um, be able to recruit. Like, here's Geodude, there's Diglett, uh, there's going to be Coughing around, there's Zubats. So, some typical stuff, and there is even supplies in here. Like apples and ethers, you know, your typical kind of stuff. We're actually making quick work of this place. We're on four F. We're on five F already. Oh my goodness. We're going to be on six in about two minutes, in like a second. Yeah, and just like that, we are already almost halfway through the dungeon, believe it or not. Because this place is only 15 floors, so it's a. It's a pretty quick place depending on how lucky you get with the stairs. But 
We should get through here fairly quickly because we are having no trouble at finding the stairs right now. So we'll keep continuing on. Cringe though. I thought I was gonna be able to knock out the zoo bat, but guess not. All right, let's keep on trucking. The EXP isn't that great to start with, but I believe starting right here, if I can find some. We start to have evolved, po evolved, evolved Pokemon, and as you saw there, Weezing's recruitable, a 1.5% chance. Hey, a one and a half percent chance is that one and a half, and then you got nine percent at the Golbat. So if you really didn't want to train up a Zubat, or you didn't want to train up uh, coughing or anything. Uh, this is your place to uh, recruit them if you get to the high enough levels. There's even Graveler here, which is a 14%. So really, you have a bunch of different options to recruit here. And we are breezing through here. I did not think this. That we were going to take this short of time. And we're on 12F already. Wow. 13. Wow. Um, and there is Onyx in here as well, and they are 14.5% chance, so the highest of anything in here, which is kind of nice. So if you can get it from Sonic Cavern, here's a perfect spot to get it. The Zubat would not like to confuse us. We need to go over here, just to make sure, because I believe there is no weather. And I should have mentioned, starting on 9F, there are a couple things. It's just, I got sidetracked because of how quickly this is going. There are a couple things in here that might be nice to know. One of which is, in Sparkles on the Ground, you can actually find TM Dig. This um, TM, you will need one of it. Or, you will need Dig at one point. So, if anything... Make sure to um, try and find one. As you saw there, the other is Tiny Mushroom. You think that's invisible, right? No, they are visible on the ground here. Perfectly findable. And just like that, let's get rid of these guys. And uh, I don't see why not. Let's have ourselves an apple. And we are out already. Eh? Well, what do you know? It's another visitor. Today must be my lucky day. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, hey, you're new around these parts, aren't you? If you're looking to get through the city, you got to answer a real guy. Tell me outside. If a pigeon were to fly from grass root to window with three eating breaks that last 15 minutes each, how long would it take for said for the said pigeon to arrive? When? Given winds are pushing south at approximately 88 miles an hour. I'm just messing with you. Insisting the look on your face, priceless. Kekka. My name is Pat. I think it's. It might have been short for some, but it's been so long and I for, since. It's been so long that I forgot. As you may have already guessed, I'm the coolest, hippest Pokemon around Tanner City. In fact, Pokemon around here typically regard me as peculiar Pat, the sidekick with the latest stuff. Who could ever disagree with a trendy, fashionable Pokemon like me? Well, the answer is simply no one. Kekka. Oh, you want to know where Tanner City is? Why, why didn't you ask you sooner? You sure are a weird Pokemon. Do you even have a name at all? The Shiny Zekrom, is it? Well, a weird name for a Pokemon. It suits you. Good to meet you, Shiny Zekrom. Peculiar Pat is at your service for all the style and fashion needs. So, what have you got any questions to start off with me? You're still asking about that? Don't you have anything more interesting yet? But that's fine. Tandron City is down south from here. Just keep going down where you are now and you should find it good and easy. Okay, yeah, just kidding. Fooled you again. Yeah. Come here, Shane Zekrom. I ain't through with you yet. 
Kick out. Oh, I'm still in tears. I can't believe you actually fell for that one. Yeah, sorry. You're just so easy to pull. Come on now. This is you look all grumpy after uh, uh, the little joke. Anyway, you're going to value your friend, but Kitty Pat will show you into town. Don't worry. This time it ain't a joke. I swear it. What? Don't, you don't believe me? Well, I don't see any reason as to why you wouldn't. Turn to see right this way. Follow me before you get yourself lost or something. Kya, kya, kya. So really quick, right here is a, a little traveling in, so you can heal here. And I wanted to show a quick few things. Once you beat Tanrin Tunnel, you can take what is no oops, what is known as Tanrin Underpass. This is a quick way. If we come through this way, by the way, the Geo dudes and the Zubats that you will see in here are actually recruitable. So if you want to have a chance at those two, go right ahead. The water up there does nothing. But once we come back out here, you will see that we got cut, or we got put to that little cave that we saw right before we talked to Slowbro. Now, if we... Excuse me, if we come back the up oh, we gotta get rid of the zigzagoon. And they are recruitable. The zigzagoons here, they are recruitable, so if you want to get one, go ahead. And as you see, now that we beat Tandron Tunnel, we get access to cut that tree and take a short cut to Tanren Tunnel. Now I will meet you guys back on the other side of the under underpath on the other side of the underpass. And we'll head up into Tanrin City. Alright, hey guys, I'm back. Let's head on into Tanrin City Plaza. Well, this is it, Tanrin City. A lot more cool and stylish than a drab place like Grasser Town, wouldn't you say? Kya -kya. Wait, you say you came from Grasser Town? Eh, I didn't mean to offend you or anything. It's a fine place now, but too. but much too small and boring for my delicate tastes. Kya -kya. Here in Tinder City, we have Pokemon of all different sorts. We have the exploring types who like to train up north, the archaeologists who study Tanrin's vast history, and everything in between. Pretty cool stuff, eh? It's like a giant berry garden full of fresh and exotic fruits. Not that the townsfolk here are edible or anything, that's just weird. Kya -kya -kya. Anyway, I'm sure you'd be best exploring the place for yourself. As for myself, I got a reputation to keep. I'll be hanging near my post south of here if you ever want to chill with the coolest side I can do and say, Why won't you? Kick out. See you later, Shiny Zekrom. And don't forget to watch your step. The strawberry tends to get angry if stepped on too much. Kick, kick, kick. Only kidding with you. Peculiar pot is out. Say, Cool, Shiny Zekrom of Grasser Town. Kya. Alright. Now, there is quite a bit. Now, he's actually not lying about something. Should you really be stepping on these flowers? Come into here, and there's a little joke. If you step on flowers, my my flowers, you stun them. My precious beauty, fire them. You monster, you vicious being, get out of here now! And you get sent right out. Of Seems that in these spirits, because you stepped on flowers, you really shouldn't have done that. It's just a little joke. All right, so starting actually off, we're gonna head straight up these stairs, and there's a few things. As you can see, there is a Pelipper house. You are able to make guilds which is what Wigglytuffs do in the housing centers I should mention that. but we are unable to do that because you need master rank and that's 13,500 points we only have 3,290 so we're a little bit far away however of course since it's a housing center you can enter houses in other people's houses from here as well and that means you can also do slash set if you enter your house from here you can do slash set house, give up, and then leave your house and come back here. Next up, Kangaskhan Storage is right here, so you have your uses. And uh, if you need to take out any money or any items and whatnot. Over here, Felix's Shop. This is some stuff in Tanrin. 25 poke for Iron Thorn in Gravel Rock, 50 poke for an apple. 100 for an orange berry, 100 for an ether, escaper for 125, special ban for 250, and a new item in shops. Big apples can be sold here for 250 poke as well as max ethers. Raw scarf for 600. Let's see what's on the second page. Reviver seeds that are only 2,000 poke apiece. So this is basically the cheapest you are going to find reviver seeds so far. 2,000 poke apiece, meaning you can spend 500 less per reviver seed than you would in Winden, and I'm going to make sure I use that. Because 
for harmonic tower let's just say you will need a lot of virus however let's come on over here old bark retirement home so the um the NPCs here, excuse me, the NPCs really don't have anything, but if you step anywhere on that bed, it's another healing point. Maybe asking, there's got to be a Chime Echo Assembly here, right? Yep, it's right here. Right above the inn is the Chime Echo Assembly Shop. Um, I'll show you a couple things that I really don't want to get into. This, it, right over here, leads to the entrance of another dungeon. It doesn't send you in it, but it's just, it's actually like a dungeon that sends you in. So in over here is something that people don't normally look at, and this is Tanrin Museum. It's got a little bit of uh, things thrown around it just so you can take a look at stuff and whatnot. If we come up here and go in here, this is the archaeological archaeological dig. It's just more of a uh, another kind of sightseeing kind of thing. And you can just look around at stuff, and yeah, I thought it, it was a pretty cool place to check out when you uh, Tanrin first opened up and everything. It was really nice to see that they took the time to do something like a museum because you don't really think of other things like that. Now this way is going to lead out eventually to another dungeon that we are not going to cover yet. And if you follow this way. If you go right from here, that's the same case as there's going to be a dungeon that way. If we head south out of the town, that's going to lead to other entrances of dungeons if we walk around. And if we can remove our teddy really quick and take our gold or crowbat, excuse me, as long as you beat Tanrin Tunnel, you now have access to flying to Tanrin. So as of course you fly back in and, and make sure right here on these top of the stairs, uh, as long as you beat Tanrin Tunnel, you now officially have access to fly. And this is Pat's house right here in case you wanted to ever talk to him again. See, well, he was pretty funny too. Now there's all sorts of other things like there's just other NPC houses and whatnot. And there's actually a nice little hidden thing. Right here you wouldn't expect it. Enter right there, Cognito. It's a little spot that you can hide out in if you ever wanted to. If you head out east of here, um, you see that there's a merchant down here. However, that merchant really doesn't uh, sell anything, I believe. Let me go check that because I want to make sure I thoroughly discuss everything. If you follow those stairs, that runs out to a couple dungeons as well. So, of course, I will not be touching any of these until we complete HP, but here you go. Occasionally, merchants from the desert bazaar to the southeast will stop here and sell their wares. It's not too good of a location, so I can see why they rarely come. So, yeah, I didn't think so. But it's uh, it, if you want to talk to the NPCs around here, I'm not saying you have to, but none of them are really interesting. Except for one that we're going to go get to now. Going to make quick mention, of course, if you go to the north, there's going to be a couple more dungeons as well. So we're not going to touch up on anything, except right here, you may have known, I ignored it, this is Tanrin Bazaar. So if you come on in, this has your basic simple stuff like Electivire to learn stuff by Tiny Mushrooms, Licky Licky to unstick your items, there is also a Togetic here for your heart scales, there's a Togekiss for your eggs, there's Zatu for boxes, there's even a Lumi for your big mushrooms. Excuse me. However, there is one new NPC here of Bronza. Get out your shards because this is where the tutor moves come in. Right there, Bronzong is the move tutor. I will put on screen how each of the shards come into play. I will also mention them here, but I'll also, of course, put them as a little bit of a description thing so you guys can see what types of moves they learn. So, I will be right back and I'm going to get a team of Pokemon where I'm going to be using shards with, so I'll be right back. Hey guys, Shiny Zach, I'm back, and I have the team that I wanted to teach moves to. So, if you walk over to Bronzong, you press F in front of it, make sure you have your shards on you. 
And there are, of course, the four types of shards, which I can finally talk about. Red shards are for any physical move, such as physical move to your moves, such as Ice Punch, Outrage, those sort of moves. Blue shards are for moves such as, well, they're, sorry, they are for special move to your moves, such as Heat Wave, Shock Wave, and whatnot. Green shards are for any status moves such as Sleep Talk and Recycle, which is actually what we're going to go for on for Porygon. And yellow shards are for any move a Pokemon can learn via this move tuner move. Um, Bronzong is for Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire move tutors, meaning 5th gen and 6th gen Pokemon are able to get move tutor moves. Alright, so, I'll teach you how to use a shard. So, of course, you walk up to Bronze and press F, and it'll say, Your shards, they speak to me. Give me one, shall, give me one, and shall bestow upon you techniques unknown. So, for example, Porygon, I want Recycle on it. We hit green, and then we get a random move. This is like a heart scale. You will get a random status condition move, that, at least in my case, for the Pokemon. So, we're going to keep going until for example we get you and you just keep pressing F and to keep talking to him until you get the move you want so we're trying to aim for recycle here but it looks like we are not having there we go so this is the whole reason I wanted Porygon in the first place at level 34 you can also get recycle but at the same time you can get it via this Bronzong so what and why I want recycle so bad is it's basically like a recycle orb. You can equip a, gr a food that's grimy. So let's just pretend. If this food was grimy, you equip it to the Pokemon and use recycle. What will happen is the grimy food will turn back into what it was before. Just like a recycle orb does. So it's basically a much... It uses PP instead of you having to buy an item. So Porygon might actually be on my team and you might not see recycle orbs as much anymore because I might try and get used to that so next up let's use uh, Houndoom a perfect example for blue shards so there we go this is the move I wanted to get for Houndoom is Heat Wave we'll get rid of one uh, rid of flamethrower and Heat Wave as you see right there is a very big AoE that's why I want it because it's going to be so helpful later on now, let's use red shards, because I wanted to get Outrage on Agron here. So you just keep going, and there we go. We got our Outrage, and I wanted to get rid of Headbutt. And to show off the last kind of shard, we're going to use Melodic and Yellow. So as you can see, Melodic got a physical type move from a Yellow shard. Another physical move. I want to see if I can get others. I guess this isn't going well. Uh, there's a special move, so there you go. You saw the blue, or your special, and your physical so far. And we're going to keep going. And that, I believe, is a status move right there. No, that's a special move, excuse me. Snore is a special move. But you can get all three types here. And there you go, there's a, a status one. So that's how yellow shards work. We're, we're going to go back to blue because the move I wanted to get on Melodic is right here. Dragon Pulse. We are going to get rid of Disarming Voice, and that is what Dragon Pulse looks like. I will meet you guys back when I have all of the Pokemon I want to get Move Tutor moves done on over with. So see you guys then. Hey guys, Shiny Zach, I'm back, and I am finished with all the move sets. Of course, if you need to see what I taught, Porygon, Melodic, Porygon, Melodic, Houndoom, and Agron. Rewind the video a little bit. Now, I changed the moveset to the four Pokemon you see in my party now. Torterra no longer is going to have Earthquake, but has Earth Power. I decided this because I, I wanted a ground type move that was wide ranged, but would not hit your teammates. And Earth Power fit because I also saw Torterra's special attack, and I was like, Torterra's special attack really is not that bad compared to its attack. It's, I mean, Sure, it's 25 points lower, but that's still decent enough to work with, in my opinion. And I also taught it Outrage by Shard. 
So that's Torterra's changes. I did get a jewel tick off screen after Snowvale Den and Snowvale Layer video before it went up, and I taught it a few moves. I taught it Rust by TM, I taught it Thunderbolt by TM, I taught it Giga Drain and Signal Beam by Shards. So now it has a really good move set that I might consider just keeping and not changing. Honchcrow here now has Heat Wave instead of Pursuit, in which I taught Shard. And Scissor, I didn't use any shards, but I taught it a TM Rest over Night Slash. So, this was basically a very good thing that we got unlocked right before Harmonic Tower. I felt it would be good because then we also tipped into Tanrin, so after Harmonic Tower, we can just straight get into Tanrin uh, dungeons um, right after HT is over. Um, so these are my shard totals for right now. Red is down to 33, yellow and blue are both down to 30, and green shards are down to 40. If anything, a lot of the dungeons in Tanrin are going to start to have more than 20 floors, so we are going to see the shard numbers get to go up a little bit. So if they do shoot up a little bit from like the Harmonic Tower video or other videos to come, now you will know why, and it's due to the fact that um, a lot of the Tanrin dungeons are going to be a lot longer, so it will be easier for us to find shards. With that being said, I have j said just about everything I wanted to in this video. In the next part, this time we will be covering Harmonic Tower, and we will be hitting the next rank as well. I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and next up is Harmonic Tower. See you guys then.